One of my favorite parts about the Android operating system as a whole is the flexibility offered to its users and in particular, the level of customization we have over our phones. Whether it be placing icons anywhere we want on our home screens or switching up the order of the shortcuts in our quick settings panel, or even just the fact that we can download an entirely different home screen launcher for an even more unique experience. With that being said, ever since the introduction of navigation gestures, using a third party launcher hasn't been the absolute best experience, mainly because you lose out on all of those amazingly fluid animations that you otherwise experience with the default home screen launcher. And so for me, where possible, I actually much prefer using a phone's stock home screen launcher, and then I try my best to customize that instead. But when it comes to stock launchers, some are far better for customizing than others. And possibly the best one out of them all is the stock One UI launcher that comes pre-installed with Samsung phones. But the thing is, a lot of the One UI customizations are somewhat hidden. And so for today's video, I'm gonna unpack five levels of customization for One UI that'll help you to make your Samsung phone look exactly how you want it to. So without further ado, let's get customizing. Now, before we get started, just one thing to mention here is that whilst there is an unearthly amount of customizations you can make across the entire One UI experience, for the most part, this video is gonna be focused solely on customizing the One UI home screen launcher itself. And we're gonna start with level one, which is the basics. These are the first customizations you can and probably should make to the One UI launcher straight out of the box without necessarily having to install any third party apps. And the first change you'll wanna make is, of course, the wallpaper. You can do this simply by long pressing anywhere on your home screen, and then by tapping wallpaper and style. Then we can tap on browse my wallpapers, and for this particular video, I'm gonna be using one of my own wallpapers, which I've already got saved to my gallery. So we'll tap on gallery, then I'll select this one here called clouds, hit done, then preview, and then done. Then I'll tap on apply to set the system color palette to match my wallpaper, and with that done, I can come back home, and there we go. From there, let's take a look at some of the basic home screen settings we can adjust. So we'll long press our home screen, then tap on settings, and there are a bunch of settings worth looking into here, but for me, I'm gonna start by disabling this add new apps to home screen setting, and then I'm gonna tap on hide apps on home and app screens, and this is an amazing feature I seriously wish would come to other smartphone launches, whereby we can run through this list and hide any apps we don't wanna see in the app drawer. So for me, I love using this feature to hide any bloatware or doubled up applications. And I also like hiding any of my widget and icon packs because I never need to use the apps themselves. And so having all of these apps hidden makes a huge difference in regards to how quickly I can find apps within my app drawer. And once that's complete, I'm gonna tap on done, then come back home, and that is level one complete. We've got a nice wallpaper and color palette set up, as well as some basic home screen settings configured, and already things are feeling much, much better. But if you know me, then you'll know that that is absolutely not where I like to leave things. So from there, let's dive into level two, advanced home screen customizations. And this is where I'm gonna download the first third-party application, and it's actually one that you can only find via the Galaxy Store, and it's called GoodLock. Goodlock is actually an application made by Samsung themselves, and it basically plays host to a huge selection of third-party modules, also made by Samsung, each of which unlock a whole heap of advanced customizations that'll allow you to essentially redesign the entire software experience. There are heaps of modules available, categorized into these makeup and life up categories, but the one we're gonna be looking at in this level is this one here called Home Up. You'll need to install this if it isn't already installed, but once it is, we can then open it and switch it on to start tweaking the various customizations on offer. For me, I'm gonna tap here where it says home screen, and the first thing I'm gonna do is change the home screen grid size to seven by seven. This setting is normally limited to five by six without the home up module installed, and believe me when I say, having these extra grid size layout options is actually amazing. I'll hit apply, then come down a little, and if you toggle this option here called app list, you can actually change the layout of your app drawer to a vertical scrolling list, much closer to the layout we have on nearly all other Android phones. However, I personally find this priority app section at the top here really annoying, and it more often than not gets in the way for me, so I actually prefer to use the standard horizontal app list layout. But the options there in case you yourself prefer it. 
But if we come back here and tap on folder, we can also actually change the folder style to a pop-up interface. Again, more similar to devices running stock Android or similar, which I actually prefer, so I'll leave this on. And then back once more, and the last setting I'm gonna showcase here is this one at the bottom called Task Changer, which impressively lets you change the layout type of your recents menu from the stock list style to either a grid style layout, a stack style layout similar to iOS, a vertical list and a slim vertical list. And what's great is that with the latest versions of One UI, these all integrate with the amazing navigation gesture animations beautifully. There's also some other really neat settings worth playing around with here, but for me, all I'm gonna do for the time being is enable this center, the currently running app option, which means the app you swipe into the recents menu will stay centered after swiping into it, which it doesn't by default. And I'm also gonna disable the search bar and recommended apps option for a much cleaner look. Again, there's a stack of other settings worth tinkering around with here, but for the time being, I'm gonna leave the home up module as I've set it and move on to level three. And so this is where things really start taking shape because with level three, we're gonna start talking about icon theming. And again, Samsung leads the pack here because not only do they allow us to use third-party icon packs with the default One UI launcher, but they also let us customize every single individual icon on an app by app basis. But it's not quite as simple as it often is when using a third-party launcher. And so to do custom theming properly, we need to come back to the GoodLock app and install this module here called Theme Park. Once we've installed it, we'll open it up. And again, there are a bunch of fun options to play around with here, including changing the overall theme and color palette of the various Samsung related apps and settings menus on your phone, customizing the Samsung keyboard, customizing the theme of your quick settings panel and even your volume panel. But the one I'm most interested in is this page here called Icon. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on create new and you get a bunch of these settings down here for making changes to the stock One UI icons. However, if we tap here where it says icon pack, we can actually go ahead and load in a third party icon pack installed on our phone. You can of course choose any that you like, but for the time being, I'm gonna choose this one here called the drops icon pack. And then if we tap here and then tap where it says change icons, I can even tap on each individual icon here to change their icons to any other icon of my choosing. And I can even tap to edit the icons using the various customization options provided. With that done, I'm gonna tap back, then this download icon here, give it a name, let's say drops one, hit okay, and then wait for it to be installed. Once it's finished installing, I then need to tap on the wiggling theme, then tap on apply, wait for it to apply. And there we go, our custom icon pack has been installed. Although as you can see, even on the home screen, we've got a missing icon here. And then when I open up my app drawer, it's even worse. There are stacks and stacks of icons that have not been themed, which is thanks to the fact that the drops icon pack, which I love, was actually discontinued many years ago. And as a result, it doesn't support a huge list of applications. But this issue even occurs with almost all third-party icon packs, resulting in a pretty big mess of mismatched icons. And so that takes us to level four, advanced icon theming. And this is where things start getting super fun and a little complex. So to solve this issue of missing icons, we're gonna use two separate applications available from the Play Store. The first is called Icon Pack Studio, which in short, allows you to create your own unique icon packs using their various filters and design styles. But what's great is that not only can you import third-party icon packs to use as the base to build upon, but it'll apply any of your custom settings to every app installed on your phone, even when the imported icon pack doesn't support it. So for me, in order to try and fill in all of the missing icons from the Drops icon pack, I like to start off by importing a third-party icon pack called the Delta icon pack, which supports well over 7,000 custom icons, giving it a much wider range of coverage than the Drops icon pack. Then I come to the design section and decrease the icon size to 44, and that's it. And so that'll then create a brand new icon for every application installed on my phone with every icon having that cute small form factor matching the drops icon pack sizing beautifully. And then for any app that is supported by the Delta icon pack, they'll then also have that more pastel colorway, again, matching the drops icon pack even more so. Then to make my life easier when it comes to setting both the Drops icon pack and this newly exported icon pack at the same time, we're gonna use another third party application called Icon Pack Mixer. This little app lets you mix up any icon packs installed on your phone simply by selecting them on an app by app basis. 
If you get the pro version, you can actually select a base icon pack to speed up this process even further, which is what I'm gonna do. But what I'm essentially doing here is selecting any icons that are from the drops icon pack first. And then for any unsupported icons, I'm selecting the ones from my freshly exported icon studio pack. And so once we've gone through and selected each of our icons accordingly, we can then tap on continue, then on mix icons. Here we want to select the create icon pack app option and doing so will mean that the app will export an installable icon pack APK file, which means we'll be able to use it within the theme park module. And so with that installed, we can now go back into the Goodlock app and open up the theme park module and then tap to create a new icon pack. We're going to tap on icon pack again, and now we're going to select our recently installed mixed icon pack. But before we install it, we'll again tap here and then tap on change icons. And I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to see if any apps were missed, which you can see that this all apps shortcut was. So I'm gonna tap that, then tap on drops and just select any old icon that I think could match up. That's just something to keep an eye on because sometimes Icon Pack Studio and Icon Pack Mixer can miss an app for one reason or another. So scrolling all the way down and checking any missed icons and then replacing them manually is essential in order to make sure that those icons don't stick out like a sore thumb once we've completed this process. But we'll come back, tap on this download icon and enter the name Drops2 tap on install, then tap on the wiggling theme, hit apply, and once that completes, we'll come back home, and there we go. We've got consistently sized icons all across the board, which just looks so much better than it did before. And from there, I'm gonna start setting up my home screen itself. The first step being to clear my home screen of all the various default elements. So I'm gonna long press on one of my icons and then tap on select. Then I'm gonna go through and select all of the icons and even this folder here, and then tap on remove. I'm also gonna long press my home screen and then swipe over and tap to delete this second home screen. Then I'm gonna long press the search bar widget here and remove that. And then finally, I'll long press the weather widget and tap to remove that. And then I can start loading in my various icons, except hang on a sec, as you can see, our icons on our home screen have the labels below them, which as far as I'm concerned, is a surefire way to make your home screen look cluttered. Now there is a way to disable app labels via the home app module by tapping on home screen and then by toggling this option here. But the issue with that is that it also hides the labels in our app drawer. And I don't know about you, but I personally don't memorize all the app icons in my app drawer. So I don't really want the label disabled here as well. But there is a solution which is to use another third party application called Shortcut Maker. This is an amazing free application that we can use to essentially create widgets for each of the custom app icons we want on our home screen. And because Shortcut Maker lets us disable shortcut labels, it'll achieve the very thing that we're after. In short, you long press your home screen and tap here where it says widgets, then we'll search for and open the Shortcut Maker option and drag and drop a one by one app shortcut to our home screen. Then we'll tap this button down the bottom to first customize our app icons. And within this menu, we're gonna tap icon pack, then mixed icon pack, and then we'll enable the hide label option. Then we can come back and search for the first app we wanna add, which for me will be the YouTube Studio application. I'll tap that and there we go. Our first app has been added. We then need to repeat this process for as many apps as we like. So I'll long press, tap on widgets and drag and drop a one by one app shortcut to our home screen. And from here on out, we only need to search for our apps as all of the previous customizations will remain applied going forward. So I'll search for my last app here, which is Google Chrome. And once I tap on that, you can see that through the magic of editing, all of my app icons have now been successfully added to my home screen. And that's the complex but very doable solution to getting consistent custom icons across the entire home screen, app drawer included, as well as how we can hide labels on the home screen without also hiding them from the app drawer. And so that brings us to the final level of customization for today, custom widgets. And whilst there are a stack of pre-built, ready to go widgets available in this widgets menu here, none of them, and I really do mean none of them, compared to the beautifully designed widgets that you can create using the custom widget maker application, KWGT. And like Shortcut Maker, KWGT also lets us create custom widgets, but this one is way more advanced, essentially letting us create highly customized widgets from the ground up. The great part though is that there are a lot of graphic design artists who have done all of the hard work for us by creating their own packs of custom made widgets and then wrapping them up into what we call a widget pack, which you can then find and download on the Google Play Store. 
And there are hundreds of third-party KWGT widget apps to find on the Google Play Store, some of which are free, others of which are paid, but all you have to do is just install a pack, then open the KWGT app, and boom, all of the newly installed pre-made widgets from that widget pack will show up. Then you just long press your home screen and tap on widgets, then search for KWGT and drag any of the size options to your home screen. But if you're unsure, then you can just start with a one by one widget and then resize it accordingly. Then you tap on that widget, find any widget you like the look of, which for me is gonna be this widget here called three from the Waffle KWGT pack. What's really cool is that you can then customize your widgets even further to make them look exactly how you want them to. So for me, I'm gonna open up this first stack group here, then we'll select this top stack group and delete it. Then we'll open up the remaining stack group, select the top two shape layers and delete both of them. After that, it's just a matter of swiping over to the layer page and adjusting the scale so it fills the entire space. And the last thing I wanna do is head back to this stack group and then over to the touch tab. And here I wanna tap this plus icon, then tap here, then here again. And then I wanna select here where it says launch app. Then I'll select the bottom option and then navigate to the frog weather shortcut application and select it. With that done, I can now hit save, come back home, and there is my completed widget, which I can even tap on to quickly launch into the Google weather page, thanks to that frog weather shortcut application. And so there you have it. That is your deep dive into what I believe are the five key levels of customizing the stock One UI launcher. And I have to give huge props to Samsung for allowing us to customize the stock launcher as much as we can. And if you're now looking for inspiration on custom home screen setups, then I highly recommend checking out my very own application palette, which features thousands of beautiful and highly customized home screen designs, pretty much all of which are able to be recreated using One UI and the various steps outlined in this video. Aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.